Florence. <laughs> That'd be amazing, wouldn't it, to live Thank somewhere you. that back, <laughs> that view. <laughs> That's a good wish. <laughs> <laughs> Is an interesting topic. I hope so. <laughs> Sounds it to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the Galactic Federation is sort of a, it's it's a, a a term that has been around for a while, at least for me, four or five years. But it's you hear it more and more now, don't you? Yeah, it's definitely. It's a, so are you are you channeling them or have they got a message they're sending through you today? Um, more like they they just want to say, hey, recruit some more. <laughs> uh, I'll right. probably I'll probably explain how you get uh to the testing and everything yeah. Yeah. and where it's located and what it looks like. And there's also facilities there if you don't want to go test or attend some of the Galactic Federation's meeting as well mm -hmm. like meet other entities cool and and i'll probably talk about some of the missions that i got when after i joined something like that yeah sounds good sounds good yeah I've, uh, there's a few people i know that say they they sit sit on galactic councils and things like that i've i've, I've never sort of gone any further than going oh that's interesting uh, so yeah <laughs> there's a lot, a lot of councils there's Council of Nine, Council of One, per mm -hmm. se. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, you think how many councils we have through, you know, in our reality, and sub councils, and yeah, I can imagine yeah. at galactic level, it's going to be huge, isn't it? I know. And there's even different collectives, like Pleiadian collectives, Arcturian collectives. So there's there's more of them as well. Yeah. <sighs> I need to get myself a sexy background like that now i think <laughs> i just i just saw this in one of my uh like uh what do you call this architectural groups then i saw it oh, oh i'm gonna grab that photo <laughs> <laughs> put it in my back now oh boy. That, chair, that chair the chair looks extremely comfortable doesn't it i it's know like, yeah it's like yeah. One of those chairs, you, you could sit there and read a good book for hours you know with the oh, wow. light from with the, the view yeah <laughs> Yeah, it'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Oh boy! I wonder where that is. Uh, even if it is it even real, is it just something that's been generated? I think it's probably the 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 trees are real. Yeah, they just added the the living space, maybe. Yeah, probably have. Yeah, it's probably a jungle picture, isn't it? And then yeah, yeah, <laughs> they just cropped it. I've got my new camera. It's super wide. It's sort of kept, it gets in. Oh, so much. there you go. <laughs> compared, compared to compared to my normal one, it's about this wide. It's like, <laughs> I just realised it's got my calendar in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm planning to get a, a better camera because I'm just using my computer camera. I did yeah. have a mic now <laughs> because the last time I went into live here, I have the the earphone type, yeah. and it didn't sound well. Right. Yeah, the, the, the external mics, I've, I've got an external mics much better. My, my Mac's about 10 years old now, so the, the mic's actually broken, and, and if it plays through, it's like, yeah, <laughs> really, and, and it's also the any sound that comes out of it is terrible, and the, the pitch is poor. It's, it's, oh, surprising. Right. it's 10 years old, so it's doing well. <laughs> so yeah, I've got everything, all these external things everywhere. <laughs> And I've also got it. I've got it elevated because I'm getting to that point where I sat at computers for probably what forty-five years now. My neck was going, oh, <laughs> so much time like this, don't you, on your laptop? Yeah, you go. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I have I lifted my monitors. Like when I look like this, I'm looking at some of my monitors. I have like three monitors here going on. So when I look up, I look at another monitor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My 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 monitor is quite a bit higher. No way, so it should be at arm's length away and just above your eye lines. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> but today I, I moved my laptop up onto a piece of wood so it's the same sort of height. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I managed, I, I've had this keyboard for ages and I actually plugged it in today. So, <laughs> oh, wow. I, I like the, the ergonomic one, the 
It's big though. But it's oh, uh, yeah. it's a wavy one. Yeah. Is it the one that sort of goes in a straight like that? Like, like this. Yeah. 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 That and but something it's something like when you do this, it's curved like this, so you don't need to twist your arm. Something like that. Yeah, these because these ones are quite quite thin, so you, you do end up with your shoulders sort of like. Yeah, and then the pain in here is like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's about time that we should be well, I think you can already, can't you? You can plug things in into your, your head and it will actually you know you can control it from there. Well, I'm sure we'll all be doing that eventually. So what time we got? Still have some few minutes <clears throat> earlier. There's always a few early birds and then uh, everyone <laughs> likes to be on the dot or a few minutes yeah. afterwards. So what time is it with you? Uh, one fifty three p.m. Yeah, all right. It's like night time there. <laughs> yeah, it's winter time now, isn't it? So it's, it's dark by half past four. It's getting colder. Yeah. Getting the cooler. weird thing is that when I when I was like in when you start manifesting your own reality, right? Uh, around go around spring i said i i thought the elementals i said can you just turn the heat just like around 22 celsius and the whole <laughs> summer only five days that went 35 celsius the rest 22 yeah, and i right. was like and i was like wishing right now how about we just minus 10 degrees on the winter this time then <laughs> some of the uh cold area entities the the one who lives in the mountain like they call them yeti but they have a different name forgot that yeah. they said you're gonna harm our environment i said then a little bit lower that you can tolerate <laughs> and yeah they said yeah i will agree i said okay deal because we used to have we can go like minus 35 right oh yeah i've been to canada went to banff and it was minus 40. I remember oh that. wow! Yeah, when, when outside and your your eyeballs freeze, don't you? Like <laughs> you yeah. blink, 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 blink. They're freezing. Remember that we went went skiing there. Yeah, you know, in the UK you get like minus three or four. That's probably about it. Yeah, it's, it's rare that it gets to that low. We even have like minus fifty, and that's without wind chill yet. Oh wow, that's fresh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Yeah, and i'm from a tropical country so it's just more fun i used to like 35 on the other scale 40 on the other scale so <laughs> <laughs> that's a big difference i know <laughs> oh boy you, you, yeah i used to start in winnipeg so people normally look like astronauts when they walk like we have like four <laughs> to five layers of jackets yeah. <laughs> and we were like <laughs> bulked up <laughs> technically oh boy yeah we've got we've got a thing over here called michelin man where we're literally yeah. there's a man with fires around and that's what people look like they got so many coats on you can always can't clap your hands i know that's exactly the thing i was about <laughs> to get that there but they yeah they look like michelin man <laughs> yeah oh boy that's yeah, when you need three thermal vests and one of those jackets that's got that he heating system in it. I've seen them nowadays. You have a little battery and it actually warms up, which is amazing. Yeah, it hasn't got that cold yet. It's not cold enough. I, I don't like wearing gloves. When it gets cold enough, that's when I put my gloves on. That's normally sort of minus one, minus two. Yeah, but hey, we're still we still got like ten degrees today. It's quite warm. Oh wow! I think we're hitting minus one, minus seven recently. Yeah. Yeah, if you go if you go up to Scotland, about eight hundred miles north of us, that's about minus two at the moment. Ooh, got to that bit of my cacao that's um a bit gritty. Mm. <laughs> There's always a bit at the bottom, isn't it? Mm. I remember I drink like the coffee. Mm -hmm. Like for 10 years, I drink coffee for work and I drink it like water. Oh, then wow. 
then the Arcturian said, you cannot do that because you're you're interrupting something with your brain that disrupting your connection. Then I went to the Med Bay, Galactic mm-hmm. Federation Med Bay, and they upgraded some stuff in my brain that time. The next day, I, I stopped drinking coffee. Like oh, wow. I, I, I stopped drinking coffee without what you call that, a rebound. It's like something new. Some people, if they are addicted to drug, then suddenly you stop. They're like shaking. I can't remember the word for it. Yeah, withdrawal. relapse, withdrawal. There you go. I didn't get any withdrawal. Ca- yeah, because you often get caffeine withdrawal, and you get like a stinking headache for a, yeah. a few days. Yes, like most, migraines most, and everything. Yeah, most people can't survive that three days of pain. And they go back. Yeah, I'm and, I'm doing that moment. I'm on a sort of juice cleanse and uh, drinking <laughs> cacao rather than drinking coffee. Uh, I've managed. To, we. I used to drink really strong coffee. You get grades like one to six, and six is like rocket fuel. You you drink that, and you're, <laughs> you're drink that all the time. And, uh, and I, yeah, I, and okay, I drink rocket, coffee that, from <laughs> morning till night without water, just coffee. Oh, wow. every day for ten years. So imagine when I just stop one day, mm. something like that. Yeah, coffee dehydrates you as well. So you, I know. your poor body is probably going. Give me some. <laughs> welcome people we're just chit chatting about the weather and the snow and giving up coffee and you know, <laughs> whatever so hello hello i mean do do pop in the in the message where you're popping in from whether you're in australia or canada or the us or europe or wherever you are let us know all right larry good to see you again Hello, hello. So, what have we got? We got Ottawa, Ottawa, PA, US, Hereford. It's not far, too far from me. Hello, people. <coughs> As usual, we're just having a chit chat while people arrive. I'll we'll probably give it to two or three minutes past. Let people arrive so they don't disturb Laurent when he's in his flow. Yeah, do put in the chat, or if you want to pop up on the screen and go, I'm from so and so. Happy for you to do that. I was just saying, where where Lawrence has got his office is amazing, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) He's high up in the trees. (laughs) I'm expecting to see a a chimpanzee jump across (laughs) or something. (laughs) Oh, boy. Hello, hello. Good. Ask Ottawa in Canada. People are popping in. So we're going to give it a few minutes, but do put in the comments where you're from. It's always nice to see where in the world people are. It's like Canada's winning at the moment. <laughs> Germany. Hey. Watch your star. We should have a, a background competition so you can get the Lawrence uh, <laughs> 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 wins today, that's for sure. <laughs> it's a race. <laughs> it's like Alan's got one of those crystal lights salt lamps. Is that a salt lamp? Yeah, yes, I've got one of those as well, just, just here. Amazing things. My only problem with mine is it collects loads of water and it's a bit damp let's keep emptying the tray out Denmark so we've got Germany Denmark yeah, I think I think Europe's starting to win <laughs> I'll give it one more minute and I'll hand the mic to Lawrence There's an interesting topic. He pinged me a message and says, I want to talk about Galactic Federation recruitment for members from Earth volunteers. I was like, whoa, that sounds amazing. I think it's been talked about uh, by a few people as well. Yeah. There's, always, there's always someone that's not heard. 
isn't there? I mean, as I was saying earlier, I've, I've, I've heard the Galactic Federation mentioned quite a few times, and in recent years it's become something you hear a lot more people talking about. Uh, but I think a lot of us are like, yeah, sounds amazing, but what is it? <laughs> How do I get involved? So, Right then, we're in Oz. Oz. Australia is in the house. I think it's stupid o'clock in the morning, isn't it, Tracy? Six, five or six in the morning. All right, we're at three minutes past. So welcome, welcome, people. I'm sure others will pop in as time goes by. So I hand over completely to Lawrence. The, the floor is yours, my friend. Very quickly. <laughs> So, uh, hi, I'm Lawrence. I'm uh, the representative of Angelus de Regalia Collective. It's an angelic realm collective and a member of Galactic Federation. I know some of you may be recruited and or chosen before you reincarnate here in, on Earth. So I'm just here to extend the invitation for some of you to do more light work here. Uh, light work for like other than what you're doing right now and though i will be discussing about the testing where it is located facilities that they have there other stuff that you can do or you, if you want to attend the federation meetings i can't remember if it's every 11th of the month and you want to see uh, meet other entities but um to access that you may have to have uh, either you set an intention or you can just remote view on the location on where I'm going to tell you. So um, the Federation is looking for people for many different uh, jobs or function. And it depends on your talent. If you're a light warrior, then you may go to subjugations or something like that. When I say subjugations, it's more like... Um, Something like uh, um, something that someone is going rampant, you have to calm things down, like a warrior duty type, uh, light warrior duties, or if you are like a grid worker, or even an ambassador, then you will probably help dispute two different races, and I will tell about some of how the missions come to me and it depends per person on how it comes because it depends on your modality right if you're fully telepathic they come to you through voice but sometimes if you're full embodied they sometimes just grab your waist or like grab your feet like that and shock you when while you're doing some drywalling budding so that happened to me but i will talk about that later so so um the testing area that I know about is in the back side of the moon. If you can look for it in the image, depends on where you are looking for in the world, there's going to be a small square. It's prominent, a small square black spot. If you're on another part of the world, you will see it on the top. If you're on my end, you will see it on the bottom. So. If you set the intention, or if you can remote remote view to go to that location, you will confirm it if you will be greeted by the guardians of that entrance. And normally, if they meet you, they will bow, bow for you to like thank you for your services and everything. And when you enter, the first thing that you will see is there's a straight way then there's a left turn left turn goes to the examination you go straight you get to see where the council meets or where the galactic federation meetings are held like from different entities and what's go going to happen in the earth uh earth realm per se so you can watch it there or you can even participate depends on the authority level that you will be granted per se you don't need to be a member if, to watch the meetings and if you don't want to take the membership test you just go straight from that uh, hallway or corridor from i should draw it or something 
better. Let me just give me a few seconds. It somehow looks like this. Whoop, there you go. So when you enter left side examination, this is the like a Colosseum type of uh, conference hall. You go up, whoop, whoop, there you go. But you go straight, you enter the med bay, the one where I'm talking about that I had my upgrades so that I can stop drinking coffee. And I have invited some few of my friends and they went there and they didn't take the examination. They just had to the med bay to, to do some DNA upgrades or changes. Now, um, you can go there without uh, doing the test. So, or you can just watch when they're saying, oh, we will have a meeting today. So you can just tap into that place. Now, there's plenty of ways you can go. Like I said, you can remote view or you can astral project there or you can, before you sleep, you say, I want to go there with setting that intention. Or when you're meditating, just tell them to pick you up. Sometimes a flying saucer will come pick you up. Arturian depends on the group that you are involved with. Could be anything. But I'm heavily involved with Arturians and multiple galactics. But mainly Arturians because of the medical stuff. So, so when you take the test, when you take the left, there's going to be an elevator. And the one, if there's someone there, just say, tell them to take you to the examination area. If not, just speak in the elevator. It will take you there anyway. When you uh, get to the examination, you will enter like a round room with like egg-like looking systems, like a chair, but it's inside a uh, egg, something. And they will put you in that egg and they will take uh, test your frequency, base frequency. Like, because when you do your shadow work, your everything, your, like, how you do your healing, it changes your DNA, right? It upgrades you and it shifts your base vibration frequency because the change of your mindset, meaning the more you can take in, the more you can access above, the more optimistic you are, the more responsibilities that they can put on you. It depends on how you interact as well, right? So those are the ones that will be tested, your base frequency or vibration. And the other one is your DNA, meaning how much work did you do with your DNA expansion, right? So like if you have create, uh, upgrade your DNA to the point that your light body co quotient is high enough to to do some certain task or something like that. So they will rigorously test you for that one, but I think the only fail rate that they will that that will happen if you have a history, a galactic history that you did some galactic crime on another planet or that which is not of your records. Meaning this is not your what you signed up for because some of us may have reincarnated to be a tyrant tyrant king but that is for us to experience being a tyrant but if you did it regardless that let's say you're a king and you're supposed to be a benevolent king in this lifetime and you did become a tyrant on your own right knowing that you should be a benevol uh, benevolent one then that goes against the universal laws and everything so it comes up with the records and you may be rejected right off the hop there is no um like you you can fail right now but as you grow through your healing you can keep on trying as long as you're alive even after this lifetime you can keep on applying doesn't matter and people ask me why do i have to to join uh the federation or something for me for me, in my terms, I just think it's my like uh, extra brownie points for my higher self because I've seen my higher self evolve with every decision I make. And 
I like it when I do some certain things in this present time and it ripples positively in my future and all of me benefited in all of me in all the dimensions, the dragon me, the angel me. So I just wanted to earn some more brownie points so that I can maximize this lifetime while we can do it because in this lifetime, we have free will. On other dimensions, we don't especially angelic area or higher realms because we are the higher you go the more stricter the rules because the higher your vibration the more you go up the more stricter it is you switch a little bit your vibration shifts a little bit lower or higher so it's more stringent up on the higher vibration realms so so that's why there's there's a cheat in here, not really a cheat, more like a, a bypass that since we are in a free will planet or free will reincarnation, we can do extra that the, uh, the other us couldn't do per se. So, um, that's is there. So, um, okay. Sorry, when I do that, I'm talking to them sometimes. Uh, so uh, they're saying that sometimes you, you will get your designate, uh, designation when you pass, like when you exam. Okay. okay. So uh, pull back a little bit. They said, when you're being tested, where on your on that cube, you will be run in multiple simulations. Like they will test your moral integrity, your unconditional love, on how will you judge every moment? Like, like the boat is sinking, who will you save? Something like that, but it's not that weird. It's more bigger than that. And, and it's you might be just testing for five minutes and you probably run 50 lifetimes on that cube. It's, a, it's an accelerated phase when I tried it. I didn't, uh, I didn't heard about it, when I joined, I just uh, went there to experience it because I'm already a member before I even get noticed that there's an exam for it. So some of us may already been have been chosen. If you're not sure, call your galactic team, ask them, they will tell you. And normally when you have a galactic team on your back, you're under a council already and you're a member. So. This is just more like a formalization for your selection. So there's two selection and now your free will, you want to do more brownie points or do a good job, but don't take this if you're not done with your main lesson, like your main purpose of this life because your one of your main mission is being a human because this is where your vessel reincarnated. Gaia gave you this vessel. So this is your main mission. Make peace with your 3D life, per se. So if you're still overwhelmed with your 3D life, then I suggest take the exam when you are traversing multiple dimensions already and reenacting multiple lives already so that it doesn't overload you, right? So, so once you get your designation, it depends on which function you will be, like grid worker, light warrior, depends. And some of you picked off a lot of jobs on what kind of light worker you be. And normally people who said, I'm strong enough, picked up almost everything. And tests are more harder. So sometimes you will get some kind of one after another life lessons in this lifetime and it's compressed one after another when you complete it because you, your soul or you want to accomplish a lot of stuff in this lifetime so that you can relax in the end. How slow or how fast you want to finish it, there's no limit. If you don't want to learn the lesson, you can just delay it. They will just say there's no speed on it. You can learn through 250 lifetimes and it's fine. They will just say, you're a slow learner. That's it. It's fine. So, but that's the advantage of this uh, 
Earth sphere because it's ascending and it's a very rare opportunity that you have a compressed timeline for multiple lives that you can compress into one. So you can relax. That's why some of your ancestors are, what do you call this, um, envious because they only have a one life path and they couldn't deviate. This is how they go in. This is how they go out. And that's why they are envious because now you can jump, change your karma, change your lifetime and jump to a different lifetime and relax once you're done with your lesson. So, so that's uh, the exam and designation. Sometimes when you are finished with your uh, exam, you won't get it, uh, your designation. They sometimes uh, like uh, haggle for some time, like where do you need to be? or which ones should be developed first before you get your own mission. So sometimes it will take a few days or a week for you to get your designation. And some of the designation that uh, some of my friends got is like some of them became fleet commanders, like they did with uh, patrol or, you know, like Star Wars per se, something like that. And some of them became light warriors Sometimes you can even, if you can, I'm going to explain one of my uh, missions. Sometimes you, if you have the ability to jump like play agents, like teleport from one spot to another, and you can teleport from this galaxy to another when you're remote viewing. Sometimes they will give you a ship and it doesn't have an engine and it have a crystal core. And what they do is like, when you touch it, and you have a star map and you focus on that, the ship uh, gives you the energy so that you can travel with it. So you don't overburn yourself and you travel by constellation because through your speed of thought, that's the, past the fastest thing in the universe, not speed of light. So you teleport there with the ship and people in the ship is your passenger so you're like a driver per se so you're like a driver so missions could be as small as that as well so you're just transporting people from one location to another or some people can like uh they have angelic wings they can teleport same thing right so um is there any questions about the exam because it's maybe different per person so far before i continue Makes sense to me. Any, any questions from anyone? Don't be shy. Put it in the chat if you've got a question. <clears throat> Let's see. No, no questions from yep. anyone. Okay. So, um, so uh, one of my missions that I have that I'm allowed to talk about is okay they want me to start how it came so I was drywalling or mudding my wall and suddenly you know when a cat like just grab you in the leg like that and you're like you get shocked but this time imagine a lion grabbing your leg like that so the, the paws are big and the claws are like thick right so they grab you in the leg I ignored it. Then they, they grab your waist like this so you can feel the claws from your side. I was like, what's up? <laughs> By that time, I already got my designation. And they said, you have a mission tonight. I said, okay, is it hard? You'll know, <laughs> you'll know, but they will give you something if you they know that you have the capacity to succeed. Then, it's a mission where I need to astral travel. So I did astral travel on a different timeline, an earth timeline, where, you know, when some of us star seeds or light workers become disgruntled or get tired of humans, or you, they keep on, you don't put labels like karmics and everything. It's just the same thing as polarities, right? Or like uh, labeling or racism is something like that. 
when people call other people karmics or NPCs, same thing, right? So when people suddenly like want some strong star seeds become deeply in groove and got tired and become disgruntled and people who have um, big awakenings already and they can manipulate their reality and they reside on higher dimensions on these timelines, they can manifest things. And if you are disgruntled, you change, you become destructive instead of creative. So they will sometimes send some volunteers like us, star seeds, to stop another star seed. So uh, what happened in that timeline is that this star, uh, this star, uh, star seed, you know, uh, I can't remember the movie, the Keanu Reeves, the Earth stood still or something like that, where every bees are eating all the artificial stuff and reverting it back to natural. But this guy, he have a purple cloud. And everything that he passes, yes, he is reverting the same thing, reverting it to the same natural state, but every living thing on it, especially humans, are being killed. And all of the psychics at that timeline, or us per se, couldn't fight him. They're already gone. And what happened is that by the time he reached me, he noticed that I'm from a different timeline. So we fought, but my intention is not to kill him. My intention is to subjugate, neutralize in what we say so that we can send him in earth school. But the problem with this one, I couldn't talk through him. It's full of rage. The heart is full of, it's like a curse. The heart is like full of hate and it's full of stuff that I couldn't clear. So I have to use some spells per se to stop him. But the thing is, I died. I died. This, this guy is a very strong star seed. But like I said, they won't send you to any of these, um, what do you call this, um, missions if they, you don't have the capacity to perform it. Uh, I resurrected just beside my dead body in a different body because I have the capacity to do so. And at that time, I became a frail girl. And this guy's <clears throat> perception changed like, like um, not in a good way because I'm not a uh, younger, but more like a adolescent so we talked it out and he's about to kill me but i said can i hold that thing you're holding and i fumbled on what he did uh, on if i try to carry it so he he think i'm powerless and everything what happened is that when i started to reconnect back to myself one of my skills on that one is I have a copy skill, which I copied his powers. And it stopped on that one. The next thing it happened is that I'm, I'm already holding his hand and I'm sending him to the Federation for Re-Education. And for when I say re, re education, it's like what you call life review. It's like when you die, you will see all of what the things that you did. And the, the most uh, painful part is that when you are now replaying everything that you did on the foot of the person that you're hurting. So you will see, feel, and everything what they felt on what you were doing. Yeah, so you will see both sides of the life review. And so he had a life review 
on that end and now he's he's going to his other self in another timeline which is a better timeline than that one but we couldn't it's energy right we couldn't just destroy some timeline because it's indestructible you have to transmute it and if he couldn't figure it out himself then someone have to do it so that's some of the light warrior missions that will be sent out and sometimes you will have to send out like if you have a very big heart sometimes they will send you to rescue some crystal children in under under caves those uh like the where the one percent are kidnapping them and experimentation and you may probably heal them on another planet or take them away from those uh rescue containment something like that so there's there's multiple uh jobs there and sometimes you are in a team sometimes not the only thing that i think that will be uh nice with having to join is that now when you are doing your modalities in this uh in this plane you can access multiple teams like you can when you're doing psychic surgeries and everything you can you have access with arturian healing teams when you're doing the psychic surgery you can summon them call them and they will come when you're doing soul integration you can ask the adromedan soul integration team and they have three teams about soul integrations and they can call them and make it more fluid so there's different teams per galactics per that is specialized on their in their uh, what do you call this um in their species per se and i think the last time i have encountered is grace i think just yesterday i, uh, I encountered grace and <clears throat> The problem was experimentation. Their problem that they told me is they experiment to develop it themselves because they already regress with their species. They're disconnected. So sometimes you have to be an ambassador for that because uh, not other than dark entities that come to you. Pause on that topic. <laughs> Sorry. They're trying to teach me something. If any one of you are using are still using barriers to protect yourself from sleep and everything, Archangel Markel giving you bubble or visualization of bubbles and everything, they said, you're a light worker. Just use your light. You don't need a protection barrier bubble. And you were like, what? I don't need that. How can I go? But remember, you're a light worker. You have to discover your inner light. And if you discovered it, nothing can touch you. But I have called something a converter that I use as a barrier, but not a barrier, but more like a converter. Like if some people are, you're in a dense energy area, like there's a like heavy energy, like someone's arguing or something like that, then you can transmute that. So that's what I call converter, but you don't need a barrier per se, because you're a light worker, you should be able to use to convert energies right off the hop and just use like your light. So because you're like, you, once you tap in into your inner light, you're untouchable, but you shouldn't waste energy. So just convert it. So that's what they're trying to say. Rico, please. I forgot what I was discussing before they interrupted me. Sorry, I can't remember. Ah, I can't remember. So, uh, so I'll jump into a different topic. The med bay in that moon surface. <clears throat> uh, the one thing that I got fascinated about that med bay is that it helps your vessel. And sometimes they will come and like, hey, go to Medbay, you need some upgrades or something like that. Or if you already know about it, then you can just go there and ask for upgrades or DNA cup removal. 
like you can even uh, when I say DNA cap removal, sometimes you can regress back to to your other age until you decide. Because right now we are in a timeline where you can reverse everything, shift your DNA, change it for yourself. But the only limitation that they are keep on telling me is you. Only you and your beliefs is the only limitation in this world. And if whatever is hampering you to stop believing in yourself, then you have to work on yourself because it's always you on the front line before you decide on anything. I can say everything in here, but the last decision will be yours to make, not mine. And you cannot just keep, always keep on blaming someone else for the decision that you made on the final attempt, right? So, so one thing that I have done on that med day is cure my dependence on coffee. And I've been drinking coffee since 25, 22. So it's probably 12 years already. And I drink it like water since morning to night. And, and one day I they said, go there and, you know, because I said, I want to stop. And can you help me? Then if I stop, I get a bad headache or migraine, like a withdrawal symptom. Even if I stop drinking, because it's it became a habit that when you get a headache, drink coffee. It will cure it. So it became a habit, a bad addiction. It also comes with emotions. You get used to being trampled on. You get used to the environment you're in. And sometimes you couldn't even know what to feel when you are in a better environment and you always revert back because you're used to that and you're not safe. That's part of it. So I said, I'm trying to stop my coffee, but I still rely on it. Can you help me? So went to the med bay. I had some work done on my brain. And the next morning, I stopped drinking coffee to check it out. I drink water the whole day, never had a headache, no nothing, no withdrawals. Until now, I'm just drinking, drinking coffee, water. And, and no drawbacks since then. And, and it's, I'm not saying that that's the end of it, but there's more that I asked them to upgrade then because my vessel have some deficiencies and so I, I went there a couple of times to have it fixed so if sometimes you may need external help or if you're trying to cure yourself and you may need some help they're just there you can call them especially the arturian healing team uh, medical team they are the i think the top i'm not raising prejudice but i like them more you can prefer anything else but i prefer them more i think play dance on my end is more on nurturing and adromedans are more on soul um they're more in the soul part especially avians as well psych psionically so they're they have different uh what do you call this different um strengths per race but you don't have to suffer from your current but like i said don't try to um don't try to take it as a like a miracle pill you have to show them that you're determined to do the first leg of the job to do it like i have a addiction but you'll have to try to be determined to stop it first then show them that you're determined to do it and they will help. So, <clears throat> because sometimes you can say, ah, I want to do this, but you just say it. You don't do anything. So I get blamed for that a lot, especially on the angelic realms because... <laughs> I always say, I understand, I understand. Then they will say, do it, <laughs> support it with your actions. So 
Okay. Secret of manifestation, they're saying. Other than creating your reality, I think you guys already know it. Thought, beliefs, words you speak dictates your reality, right? But the hardest part is attaching emotions on that reality that it already come. Oh, I got a lot of clients today. I'm excited. Who will I meet? Actions. I have clients today a lot, so I have to prepare early. So I wake up. So the other one is actions, emotions. Then what do you call this? Perfect time balance for everything. And you have to balance your 3D life, your resting life, and your passions to totally align to that future that you want. And that is how you master your manifestation. Why I have to uh, imply that you have to be more um, stringent in this because on the higher realms, the more you are mentally evolved or mentally matured with your learnings or in your healings because everything happens just like this especially seventh realm above they normally let you learn a lot of stuff before you access those because once you access those and you suddenly think of something and you didn't pull it back it could wreck havoc somewhere or it will ripple back to you 10 to 100 times which is not good so you have to be more cautious that's why you have the slack in here that's why that's why it's slow that's why it's hard to manifest because you haven't removed the the limiting beliefs and the one that because all of us are technically one in every aspect it's like a prism in a rainbow right you shoot white light in a prism you see rainbow colors i may be the red one you may be a blue another one may be a violet different aspect so once you reach a proper mental state and acceptance and like how you see things on a higher perspective then the more cautious you with how you say things, the more cautious you with how you label things and the more you are more because you're more cautious because what you think happens just like that. And sometimes they stop you from ascending because you may think of something just by looking at someone and it ripples back at you and it affects you. That's why sometimes the lessons are hard and I always tell this that it's easy to look at the negative side, but it's hardest and more rewarding to see the positive side. And one more thing is that the words you speak, like a um, quick example, like saying, I miss you. I miss you, meaning acknowledging you're lacking someone. Praying about, I want to get rich. Praying is acknowledging that you are lacking money. By doing that, you send signal to the universe. I'm lacking money. What will the universe do? Okay, here's the scenario. You lack money. It materializes. It reflects. So if you... They're calling it self-awareness and self-reflection. Now you have met me. It means that you are now um, encouraged to, when you meditate, dig deep into your self-awareness on the things that you do that may affect you when you're manifesting. Because we are strong manifestors, especially the dragon group. So you have a lot of energies that you can transmute. And so that's sometimes when you get angry, it's, it's big energy that it could affect someone else. So that's... Mental clarity, please.
later. Sorry. Uh, what was I got interrupted? Uh, sorry, what was I discussing again? <laughs> they sometimes interrupt me. Uh, any questions so far? No, you just talk about beware in the anger and uh, so oh, oh, yeah, the manifestation. So, yeah. They just said that pause on that one. <laughs> Because, yeah, and they said uh, something like this. Um, let's say, uh, okay, let's say uh, <clears throat> you say you keep on let, uh, hearing me saying I am the representative of Angelic Realm and I'm a member of Galactic Federation. They said, I know you will ruffle feathers. And people will always say, why you, not me? imposter syndrome they say they say speak your truth don't be shy the more you hide your true self but look you have to be grounded and humble because now you have to learn how to handle your royalty you are royal in your own right and you have to handle it that way that to like um Mental image, please. <laughs> I kept get, getting disrupted. <laughs> I forgot again what I was about to say. <laughs> They're telling me some stuff that I, I'm noting something. So, royalty, that's the word. Okay, thank you for reminder. So, uh, yeah, you're, every one of you are royalty. You are chosen. And you don't have to be, everyone is an old soul. You are just from a different galaxy. I know you miss home and everything, but your main quest at the moment is this life. And Gaia gave you this vessel to help contribute so that she can ascend. Because this time it's her, it's crucial for her. One thing that accelerates manifestation is service to others let me rephrase this one let's say money people think money is evil but what if you reframe it mental image kaya what if you reframe money and say it like this in your affirmation money can you help me gain more of you so i can reach more people and access more modalities so I can have more reach on other patients that I am supposed to reach. And I could probably ripple and help other people with how I can do my service in whatever modality you are uh, or what talent you can provide. So if you frame it like that, you frame it, beyond yourself and if you're focused on profit it's like a ping pong you're calling it's like i need money i hate money i, hate, I need money but i hate money i'm labeling it wrong so you see it the thing couldn't move and when you wish for something did I say about that before? I'm not sure if they're trying to send some message from this group, <laughs> but because the topics are being jumped from one thing to another, but let's just proceed anyway. So when you're manifest, man, manifesting, the universe will always say yes. And they will, you probably ask, where's my reward if like this they will create a train of rewards for you but you can keep on wishing the train is there but you may be waiting on a road without train tracks by doing actions no matter how small baby steps you build tracks slowly and 
when you build those tracks and you completed it, you may have learned a big valuable lesson compared more precious than that abundance train that you have manifested way, way before. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> to compound of that, sorry, they're just, just dropping one after another. So when you want to compound of that, they said, at least do one or three things every day that will plant seeds for your manifestation, no matter how small. Do it every day. Because when you build a track and the train starts coming, every day that you plant seeds, different train comes for different seeds when it's time for harvest. So the harvest keeps on coming, 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 coming. So that's how you manifest infinitely later on. But like I said, you, when you build the tracks, it's the hardest part. But appreciate it, learn it, master it. So when you build multiple tracks later on, it's easier. And probably that's the first main track is overcoming what is your first life lesson in this lifetime. I had mine. I conquered mine. It's super hard. Very, very hard. It's like facing a cliff, but I jumped anyway three times already. So I hope you do the same. There is no wrong decisions. It's just longer or shorter decision. And just always reframe it that everything that's happening to you right now is for your benefit, no matter how bad it is. Imagine renovation. You won't, if you couldn't see past the chaos, you won't see what's coming new. And everything right now is breaking apart. And that is to make space for the new to come. You want me to talk about that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is one thing to look forward to. I never told anyone about this because this is my favorite timeline when I was exploring timelines. <clears throat> this is the timeline that I'm trying to reach. That's why I keep on working hard on myself and develop, developing stuff. And that's why the collective I'm in is called Angelus Regalia. Angelus meaning angelic. Regalia means tools. We create tools. And when I say we create tools, let's say you have a chakra system, I can add something on it, which is outside your activation, DNA activation. So we create tools, modalities, something like that. So the timeline that they want me to speak about is there is no vehicle. Everything is portal-based, especially for everyone who are grid worker. They are being called later on in a few years time, they will be creating grids for teleport, tel teleportation like Harry Potter. But this one is like a magic circle teleport. Your vehicles is more on interstellar if you need so. Like if you need to travel Andromeda, if you couldn't travel there yourself. People, the jobs are handled by AI. Some of you may have demonized AI, but by the time you keep on evolving your DNA, your IQ can hit 700 like Arturians. When Arturians re, re uh, what do you call this, regenerate, they have like a kangaroo pouch where they birth them on their own selves, retaining their own memory. And they do that every 100 years. So they're like birthing themselves through their pouch and their old shell they uh, honor and for its service and they grow again. That's why they serve for 500 years. And on my timeline, it doesn't have to be yours. The human on, our, on my timeline lives 900 years, average. And your base look reverts back to 30 years old. 
and that's why they're always a DNA activation. And there's modification and there's more, it's a, it's a process and we're getting there. And technologies have been starting to pop up in my timeline. There's even a metal discovered in this timeline where I'm right now, because every one of us, every one of you may be in a different timeline. And I'm just telling you what my timeline is. And we discovered a metal in this timeline that that just reacts for hot and cold very aggressively which is when you just put cold and hot water here he just keep on flipping free energy so you see we don't need combustion and there's there's more technology popping up in my timeline and there's even some algae that eats pollution it's oil and everything so there's there's that and i could also say one of my friends timeline ETs or galactics are already down in their plane, in their plane, and they're helping with their technologies. But my timeline I like more is where everyone are, have their own gifts as their new job. Your 3D job, don't be afraid to lose it when you are being called to. But don't just, I'm going to go. I need more job because we are still in a transition phase. Make this with it. It's serving you. Thank it. Remember, shed your old beliefs. It's serving you. It's providing you. So be appreciative. Be of gratitude. That is your highest key to vibrate higher. Be of gratitude. That's the highest form of prayer. And it's as long as it's serving you, then thank it. It's providing food on your table. Thank it. Because we're still in transition. Now. On my timeline, everything is being reverted back and houses are different. And of course, ETRs, uh, ETs per se is already here. There's no veil or veil. And I'm not gonna answer if it's if it's flat, flat or round. It depends on your what you want, <laughs> but your reality, right? But what some end it all our timelines will merge and my timeline will merge into yours and technologies discovered are gonna merge as well and that's where i'm jumping on that's why i'm working on it on this lifetime to unload all of my lessons so i can relax and when i talk to my team like that my my lessons are day after day and they I get nagged when I don't do something because they said, you want this one? It's the hardest part, but you have to work on it. So they will teach you stuff that you have to align with that timeline. So if you want to visit timeline, just ask your spirit team if you can have access to time magic or dimension magic. You will see it. Some of you are gifted to see multiple dimensions. I have access to life and death per se that's why sometimes they send me to missions where some can die and you know hell heaven and so it depends on your gifts on what you have access to and is there any other questions so far There's one question in there in the chat from Alan. He says, uh, were you led to the council by the dragons? No. Um, I was led here by the galactics. And when I say galactic, other than the Arcturian and everyone, there's a galactic dragon. There's a galactic phoenix. There's a galactic unicorn. And don't limit them to be the ET. They're galactic mantises. And sometimes there's galactic worms to be perhaps. Don't limit them. Because even dolphins are more uh, psychically evolved in whales. So, and they're from avian. 
underwater stuff. And I'm uh, only led to explore this group for recruitment because I think there is some people here that are being called to. And this is more like, if you're waiting for a sign, this is it. <laughs> Stop procrastinating. This is it. It's not what's that what they're saying. If they keep on praying for a sign, this is it. So uh, I think that's my message for the day. And I hope it, it helped. And I hope I'll be seeing you more, every one of you, if all of you get to be in a joint mission to do something. It doesn't have to be like light, war light warrior duty. So. so anything, something like that. Beautiful. Thank you for all that. And has anyone got any questions? There was a lot of information there. And it, it, a lot of it made sense to me. A lot of it hit home as well. So thank you for that. But anybody else got a question? If you want to type it or if you want to open your mic, you're welcome to speak. Don't be shy. This is your moment. This is your sign, maybe. Well, look, you know where Lawrence is. There'll be the link. So if you if you're if you're a bit shy to ask now, I'm sure he'll uh, answer the questions if you sort of post it against this video once it's loaded up, or contact him. A few comments coming for you. Um, thank you for having me, and keep healing. The world needs you. There's only one you, and. There are people who are waiting for your healing and they are part of your soul contracts. And like I said, they're waiting for you. So keep on chugging along. Your light worker duties are being called. And I hope that you find your light as it is the brightest thing that is making Gaia ascend. So thank you as well for your services. I think that's it. That's all for me for now. Thank you for the message. Has anyone got any last minute questions? No, just lots of thank yous. Alert from calendar. Heart with ribbon. Dream mark. <laughs> Richard Mud Clubhouse. <laughs> I need to get the mark. <laughs> cool. There's no questions. I mean, as I say, Lawrence is there if you want to send him any questions later. Um, the replay will be up uh, in the next couple of days. There's a lot of information there, so uh, you probably want to rewatch it a few times and make some notes. I've, I've made about 10 pages of notes. So, <laughs> Lawrence, thank you very much for uh, sending that information to us. And uh, yeah, if ever you want to uh, you. come on again and share anything, just let me know and we'll, uh, we'll organize it. We'll be waiting for your cool stories. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. My day go, everyone. See you all soon. Bye-bye.